All right, um, this is a demo of all four of the front panel signals on my Whelan WS3000 serial number 717 electronic siren controller. This is a roughly 1984 date of production controller. It was installed in roughly 1987 at the Trojan Nuclear Power Plant. As you can see, it has four 400 watt amplifiers, each of which has four driver indicators. This is due to the fact that the Whelan 3016 siren, as it's become to be known, uses 16 total drivers. These are most of the drivers out of my siren right here on the ground. The siren head itself is outside. I have one driver hooked up to the control panel currently. It is inside that bucket covered with a towel as to not disturb the piece in the neighborhood. So first I will be testing the whale tone. Next, I will be testing the attack tone, which is fast whale on other controllers. Next, I will be testing the alert tone. Next, I will be testing the continuous air horn tone. These controllers were not capable of a pulsed air horn, as they are fully analog. I have previously tested the high-low tone on this controller. I will not be testing it today, as it requires me to open the controller up and find the specific wire that triggers it, but I do have a video of that on my YouTube channel, so you will be able to look at it. Just as a little bit of further information on this controller, let me open it up real quick. This is what the back panel of the inside of the siren looks like. You have your 120 volt outlet that both the battery charger and the power plug that would go to the Cyrotol radio plugs into. You have your battery charger assembly down here. You have your four amplifiers, which are the large assemblies with the black circuit board, uh, black heat sinks on them. You have your tone generator and your rotator control. This is the tone generator. It has two plugs in it, one of which is for power actually three plugs, one of which is for power, one of which is for signal activation and radio, and one of which is for uh, silent test and other things, I believe. This is the rotator control board. One of these plugs is for power. The other is for control from the silent test board or the radio, which would have gone here. And then if we go down here, you can see that there is a second set of plugs that powers the rotator motor itself. The plug on the right side of your screen is the 24 volt power in that would go to the rotator. And the plug on the left is the actual rotator plug. The wire coming from the rotator is right here. It has many wires in it. Yeah, let me get a better angle. There you go. The two wires on the very left are for the rotator power. The rest of the wires are for the rotator position measuring assembly. The positioning measuring on the siren is accomplished using a black plastic disc engraved with several slots in it, and it is read by a series of five photodiodes and five infrared LEDs. When the slot opens, it allows infrared light to pass through and hit the photodiode, 
pulling the signal line low to ground, which signals the controller that in fact the siren is rotating. The siren's rotator measuring mechanism is currently non-functional, but will hopefully be fixed in the near future. As a result, the silent test board does not illuminate the rotator motor function light when silent tested. However, it will in fact illuminate the rest of the lights aside from the full driver functionality test because I do not have all four, uh, all 16 drivers hooked up at this time. Thank you for watching and stay tuned for more updates.